Today's video is sponsored by Haya, a daily children's vitamin that's cleaner and tastier. More on them later. With the start of fall, we've already seen a shift in the seasons where we live, and so I find myself these weeks just kind of leaning more and more into the cozy, warm, comforting meals and still trying to keep them healthy. So this morning, instead of just our normal scrambled eggs or sausage and bacon, we're gonna make a Dutch baby pancake in the oven and we're gonna top it with some berry sauce and berries and just have a really warming breakfast. The easiest way I found to make a Dutch baby pancake is to make it in a blender. So I like to use a big Nutribullet cup. This is so quick. So for my family size, I like to take the recipe that I normally find online and actually double it and make it all in the same pan anyway. And it just makes kind of like a thicker, almost like a French toast Dutch baby. It's like a little bit of a different texture and I really like it. It kind of reminds me of bread pudding or something if you like that, which I love. So all I did was put in six eggs into my Nutribullet cup and then I put in one cup of milk, one cup of all-purpose flour. I like to do a good splash of vanilla extract and I'll do a little pinch of nutmeg and sometimes I'll even do cinnamon or, you know, switch up my spices. And then I just do a little bit of powdered sugar. Sometimes I'll use organic powdered sugar or honey or even date syrup. I'll just switch up the sweetener all the time. Maple syrup's also good. And then I just blend it for about 30 seconds in the Nutribullet and it could not be faster than that. And while I do that, I already have my pan in my oven preheating at about 400 and I'll just go ahead and get that skillet really nice and hot and then I'll add in half a stick of butter into the pan once it's really hot and then pour that Dutch baby batter in and I'll pop it in the oven and it'll be done in about 20 minutes and it's just such a quick breakfast to pull together. I love it and it's so much easier than standing by the stove cooking a bunch of things. I just whip up the batter in about one minute and put it in the oven and before you know it, breakfast is ready to go. Once it's done cooking and it's completely puffed up and golden brown and delicious, I'll usually top it with a little bit of butter. You could do maple syrup or honey, but I recently found this delicious Kodiak syrup from Costco and it's a berry syrup and it actually has less sugar in it than maple syrup and it has really good ingredients. So I've been using that a ton lately. It is so good. You guys have to try it. And then I just sprinkled over a few stray blueberries that were in the back of the fridge. So I popped those on top with a little blob of butter and breakfast was ready to go. This is so good and definitely one of our favorite fall breakfasts right now. And if you watch your sugar intake at all, then this is a good breakfast because even though it is sweet and we added the syrup and the berries, it also has six eggs, which is quite a lot of eggs for breakfast. So we're still getting in that good protein and fat right at breakfast and antioxidants from the berry syrup and the berries. So this berry Dutch baby is one of our favorite like weekend breakfasts. It's really cozy and comforting. And I found that berry syrup the other day at Costco and it is low in sugar. It's lower in sugar than maple syrup, which I think is really cool because even though it's natural sugar, I still like to kind of scale back on our sugar intake if I can. So I used a little bit of that and some organic blueberries on top and it's just so easy and quick, but it tastes like a really good hearty breakfast that took a long time to cook. Like if I'm cooking pancakes or French toast, it usually takes me at least half an hour at the stove flipping things. So I love doing this in the oven because I can just pop it in and it's done really quick, but it has that same kind of 
special breakfast feel. Since this breakfast doesn't have any vegetables in it today, it just makes me feel a little bit better that the syrup is at least low sugar. And I'm also gonna give the kids their vitamin today, which brings me to today's video sponsor, Haya Health. So I don't really like to give my kids the typical like gummy vitamin because most of it is just sugar. It's kind of like giving them candy for breakfast. So I try to avoid that when I can. So that's why I love these Haya vitamins because they have absolutely no junk in them at all. They're just good quality, no sugar added vitamins made here in the USA, which I I love because a lot of gummy vitamins and things like that are usually manufactured overseas. They even come in an adorable little glass bottle that you just get refills every month. Haya was formulated with the help of nutritional experts. It's pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies to help support immunity, energy, brain function, and so much more. And it's non-GMO, vegan, dairy-free, allergy-free, gelatin-free, nut-free, and everything else you can imagine. And it's not just good for your kids, it's also good for the environment because it comes in a reusable glass bottle. So every month after that, Haya will send you a no plastic refill pouch of fresh vitamins so you can just refill it and you keep that same glass bottle. So even if you feel your kids well you still want to fill in those common gaps in your children's diet and so this is a great way to do it to give your kids some full body nourishment with a yummy taste my kids love I hope you guys try these out too. And Haya is actually offering my viewers 50% off their first order. So you can just go to HayaHealth.com forward slash Healthy Elizabeth or click the link in the description box below and get 50% off your first order. Now it's time to get started on a delicious cozy fall dinner. So I'm breaking up my crock pot and tonight I'm gonna to be making a white bean and sausage kind of like crock pot stew. It's almost like red beans and rice, but without the rice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bunch of vegetables. I'm gonna load this with tons of veggies to help balance out all of the beans. And I'm just chopping up some heirloom carrots. I love these, they're good organic carrots. And so I don't even peel them. I leave the skin on because there's no pesticides. So I just go ahead and and I'm chopping these pretty finely. I want them to kind of cook down and marry into the saucy bean mixture. And so I'm doing carrots. I'm gonna do some bell peppers. These are all for my garden, so I wanna go ahead and use these up before they start going bad because they've just been stored in my little root cellar fridge. So I'm gonna chop these up and dice them. And then I'm also gonna do some celery. I've got some onion and garlic, and we're gonna put that all in along with the beans that I soaked in my ingredient prep the other day, and also the sliced up grass-fed Polish sausages that I had meal prepped again in my fridge, or ingredient prepped <laughs> in my fridge, and kept in my little stainless bowls with the lids. They stored really, really well, and so everything is still really fresh. So I'm just gonna chop this all up and put this in the crock pot, and then we'll season it and have this slowly cooking all day long. I love these kind of meals. Sometimes when I'm putting in a garlic in a dish and I really want it to melt into the sauce, I'll mince it up like I would normally, and then I'll just sprinkle a little bit of my sea salt on it and kind of mash it with my knife, and it just makes it disappear into the sauce. So if you have kids that don't want big chunks of garlic or something, that's a great little trick. Now I'm just taking the navy beans that I had soaking overnight in my sea salt and apple cider vinegar, and I'm just dumping those out and rinsing them, and then I'm gonna put a whole pound of those into the crock pot, along with some of my homemade veggie stock that I already had prepped and in the fridge, and then I'm tossing in that grass-fed Polish sausage and all of my different veggies. It's so colorful, which I think is great because usually when you think fall or winter cooking, you think about really heavy foods that don't have a lot of vegetables, but I say take those recipes you'd normally make any Way and just throw a bunch of different vegetables in there. It's really hard to go wrong, especially with things like carrots and onions and garlic and kales and stuff like that. You can put them in almost anything and just make them disappear into a really flavorful sauce. So that's what I'm doing here. Something I would normally make is beans and sausage, and I'm just gonna add as many vegetables as I can in there and just flavor it with 
two dried bay leaves. I did onion powder, garlic powder, and I also did some Cajun seasoning, which I think adds a really comforting flavor, but if you don't want the spice, you can always just use some smoked paprika or sweet paprika. Just a little bit of depth of flavor is always really nice in a dish like this. And after those beans cooked all day, I cooked them for about five hours on high, and then I just took out my wooden spoon and I smashed some of those beans up against the side. And this kind of releases some of their starches and thickens it a little bit and makes it like a hearty bean stew with sausage. And I just topped this with some of my grass-fed organic raw sharp cheddar cheese. It reminds me of a white chili. Today we're gonna to be running some errands right around lunchtime and so I'm gonna go ahead and get lunch started by getting some pasture-raised chicken into the Instant Pot and I'm gonna have this pressure cooking and then just on warm mode until I'm ready to prepare the rest of the lunch. So I have about three, I think three chicken breasts here from Pasture Bird. They're one of my favorites because it's nice pasture-raised chicken and I'm just drizzling them with a little bit of avocado oil and then taking some classic Primal Kitchen sauce, barbecue sauce, and drizzling just a little bit over the top of that to kind of give it a barbecue barbecue flavor and then I'll add some more later but I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the instant pot with a tiny splash of my vegetable broth again just to keep a little liquid in there so it cooks well and then I'm gonna pressure cook this for about 10 minutes on high I love primal kitchen because they don't sweeten their barbecue sauce and then if I do want a little bit of sweetness sometimes I'll add in um, I've been adding in some date syrup just like a little dash really brings out the sweetness and it doesn't have a bunch of like processed sugar or high fructose corn syrup so that's something I've been doing one of you guys actually commented and told me about using date syrup you said you use it in your coffee in your tea and I wasn't really sure how to use it so I'd never bought it before but now I'm using it and I love it so I just put a little bit of the primal kitchen barbecue sauce and I'll taste it with the chicken and see if I want to add in some of that date syrup but it, it'll probably be just fine how it is so I'm gonna do that and I put in a little bit of my veggie broth I made in the last video when we were doing some of our meal prep for the week or ingredient prep for the week. I'm just gonna let this cook on high pressure for about 10 minutes and then afterwards I'm gonna shred that up and then we're gonna be making some barbecue chicken grilled cheese sandwiches on sourdough bread and it sounds so delicious. I'm so excited to try this. I just thought it sounded good so I wanted to make it and I think it's gonna be a delicious fall cozy hearty lunch. Now I'm just gonna take my sourdough bowl that I made the other day. It's nice and crusty. I just leave it out on the counter with a tea towel wrapped around it. So it's got a nice good crust and it's not too moist in the middle. So I like it like this. I'm gonna go ahead and slice some long slices and then I'm gonna layer it with our, and then we've got our barbecue chicken that's nice and shredded really finely. And then I'm gonna take some of my raw organic, just white cheddar cheese that I grated already and I'm just gonna add this on top and then we're gonna make our grilled cheese and plenty of butter over here on my griddle. Grilled cheese sandwiches are actually one of my favorite foods and especially in the fall and winter I just think it's such a cozy meal. I love it with soups or just on its own and that's why I wanted to add the chicken to this because I love having stuff like this for lunch but I definitely need some protein so adding this chicken to it just really tied us all over for the day and I think it is a great lunch. I want to make a different variation of this again next week because I just love it and I kind of made it panini style. I took one of my cast iron skillets and put it on top and kind of just squished it down a little bit 
and it just helps give it that really nice cheesy crusty feel for dinner tonight i'm going to pull some more of my bell peppers from the root cellar fridge and i'm going to dice these up along with another onion i feel like i use so many of the same vegetables but that's what we have to eat we have the same handful of vegetables so when you're trying to switch it up and eat different things i feel like it's all about how you prepare them and getting really creative with flavors and combinations and seasonings and that's really how you switch it up because so many of our meals are around the same ingredients chicken beef bell peppers squashes so tonight I'm going to take our normal chili that we make and I'm going to switch it up a little bit by adding in some different vegetables. So I'm going to go ahead and take my bell pepper and my onion and get that in my pan with a little bit of what I call house seasoning. So it's got salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. And I use this on everything. So I thought, let me just make a little bit of it. I used to watch this lady growing up and she always had house seasoning. So I just made my own and it saves a little bit of time when I'm sprinkling in so many things all the time. And then I have a can of black beans and kidney beans and I'm just dumping out all the liquid from that. You can keep it if you want, but I'm just going to go ahead and rinse that off because I'm going to use some of my broth and the juice from the tomatoes I think will make it saucy enough. So to use up some of the vegetables that I grew in my garden this year and to make this more healthy and fall-esque, I'm going to use some of the cubed and peeled butternut squash. And these all came from my garden. It's so exciting. They're so yummy and they are honey nut squashes. So they're a little bit smaller and sweeter. And so I'm just going to take some of those and add that into my normal chili recipe. And I like to add in a good amount of tomato paste. And I love the ones in the tube because you can squeeze it out as much as you need and then put it back in the fridge so it's not wasteful. I like that a lot better than the canned versions. And then I'm gonna add in a few good handfuls of the butternut squash that I already had prepped and ready in my fridge. This is so key to making quick dinners so I could just add that in without having to do all the prep work. So I've got my sauteed ground beef and onions and peppers and the butternut squash all in here. And then I'm gonna let that simmer down with that tomato paste and all the spices and a can that I drained of diced tomatoes. So now that all my ingredients are in there, I'm just gonna let this simmer down for a while. And I normally like to sweeten my chili just a hair with some brown sugar or raw sugar, coconut sugar. But tonight I'm gonna use some of that date syrup for the first time. My family will definitely be able to get two meals out of this pot of chili. So to stretch it even further to make sure we get two full meals out of it, I'm gonna be making some pumpkin cornbread. And this is something I've never made before, but it just sounds like it would be really good. And so I tried it out. I didn't get the recipe perfect, so I'm definitely gonna have have to make it again but it was pretty good my husband really liked it he liked that it wasn't overly sweet either so I just did some pumpkin and I also put in a little bit of pumpkin pie spice but you can make your own but I happen to have some on hand so I went ahead and added that in along with melted butter and I used some more of that date syrup. You could also probably substitute molasses for this, but I went ahead and used the date syrup. I told you guys I'm loving it. It's been really fun to play around with the new ingredient. And then I also added in a couple eggs. Of course, you have to have eggs with cornbread. I used a little bit of salt. And then instead of buttermilk or milk, I decided to use kefir because that's what I had in my fridge. I usually have kefir all the time. So I just mixed up all my wet ingredients and then I added in some flour and some cornmeal.
hope I gave you guys some realistic food inspiration and that you enjoyed cooking with me today. And thank you so much again to Haya for sponsoring today's video.